Okay, I guess artists write poems or write plays, and that's their way to interpret existence, maybe. But scientists can go in there and actually explain, say, where life came from on the planet in terms of evolution, or perhaps how the rocks were formed in geological terms. And that, for some reason, appealed to me as a more solid way to, to explain existence, if you like. And it was just purely based on curiosity. Because obviously scientists are innate, and we're all curious as humans, but scientists for some reason take it one step further and, and, and make, it, make a job out of it, I guess, and try to solve that problem and, and satisfy that curiousness. And I remember when I was in school, the more arts-oriented friends of mine would say, you couldn't possibly consider being a scientist. So generally it was seen negatively, I'd say, by, by many, many people, unless it was a way to get a job in a technological way. But for me it was more than that. It was, as I say, it was just a way of, a way of studying the world and knowing about the world. When you're young and at that age, you don't know really what you do, want to do in truth, you know. And in fact, I, I did biochemistry in Trinity, and that, that is a more molecular kind of science. It's trying to get to the chemical basis of life. And, and still, I didn't really, the bug didn't bite until my final year in Trinity when I did a research project. And part of every scientist's training is to do a little piece of research. And then suddenly, it all clicked into place for me because for the first time ever, I felt I was doing something that was really getting to the core of a question scientifically and trying to make a discovery. And this is the, the ultimate thrill for the scientist is to see something no one else has ever seen in the world, right, which is, which is great. And it's a bit like, I call it the, the Christopher Columbus moment when, when kind of the, the cloud clears and you see the new world. And in that project, I made a very small discovery. Now, it wasn't anyway major, but I suddenly began to think, hang on, there's something in this business now. I, not only can I learn about science, and enjoy it for what it is, but I can also actually do science and add a little increment of knowledge to a particular scientific problem. And that really got my imagination. And it's a fantastic adventure that humans are on, really, scientifically. So I just get an innate pleasure out of it. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is this, this dreaded curiosity. I, I want, I've got this yearning to understand more about the area I work in. And, and you can't beat the thrill of it when, when you do make a discovery. Uh, and you've seen something for the first time that nobody else in the world has seen. I mean, it's rare any of us get that thrill, I guess, anyway. But as scientists, it's rare as well. And uh, the ultimate thrill would be if my discoveries or any of the community's discoveries gave rise to a new treatment for malaria or TB or arthritis or MS. I mean, that would be the absolute jackpot because then you'd really feel that you're, you've made a difference. I, I travel a lot now as a scientist. I'm always at conferences and giving talks and stuff. And, and the received wisdom of the Irish is we're very artistic and that we're musicians and poets and so on. Um, and I guess maybe it's because we haven't sold ourselves in the way we would have liked either, because there's no doubt through the 1800s, you know, and the first part of this century, there were some fantastic Irish scientists. So I guess maybe we haven't blown our own trumpet loudly enough, would be one way to put it. It's also easier, I think, for people, say in the media or in other well, like walks of life like that to push the arts because they understand it themselves. The trouble with science is it's very specialised and the terminology puts people off and so therefore the people who write the opinion pieces in Time magazine about the Irish, maybe they aren't able to discuss science or in the way that we'd like them to. So that might be a cultural thing I guess as well. We're always trying to slag off authority or at least we always feel slightly rebellious, you know. And the Irish still have that, I think. And that kind of rebelliousness and that capacity to, uh, to, to sort of rub up against the dogma, I suppose is what you'd call it. I'm sure that might, pay, that might partly be involved in this. So if, if you're trying to rub up against the dogma and trying to criticise the dogma and trying to you know, puncture someone's balloon, as it were, you might be driven to trying something a bit more radical that might be then a bit more adventurous and a bit more risky, I suppose. And then lo and behold, that might turn out to be the thing then that allows the field to move forward. So I think there's an element of that. And certainly Irish scientists at conferences and so on, they're often the ones to ask the, uh, the, the tough question in a jocose kind of way though, not, not, in an, not in an aggressive accusatory way, you know, and certainly uh, that, that part of our, our, our history might, might be informing that attitude, I guess. Um, and again, at the moment, if you look at it, the, 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 so because of Science Foundation Ireland funding all this wonderful new science, there's some great discoveries being made in Ireland. And the rate of discovery, if you like, if you're, being very, if you're using a metric, I suppose, if you could, has gone up a lot because of all this funding. So it was never a case that we weren't able to do it. It was just simply we didn't have the resources to do it. And I think that, that's going to be a feature on, ongoing. Mm. And I've no doubt, again, optimistically, that the Irish will continue and it'll get better. And we will begin to make more and more of these scientific discoveries that really count out there because of that. Mm. And it's, probably t it's partly tied into national pride, but also tied into this, this capacity to, to be slightly critical and mm. you know, rub up against authority a bit, I guess, would be useful as well. Mm.